Okay, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Tahir Aziz. Um, I teach for Computer Office Studies. Um, I teach mostly in Computer Science Department. Uh, I've been teaching uh, for last, uh, I would say this is 12th year. Uh, eight, uh, eight years for as a full-time faculty and four years before uh, my full-time position, I was a part-time faculty. Um, I teach mostly programming languages, but uh, like uh, Mary has mentioned that um, uh, I'm a practicing Muslim and I would like to share some of the information I have with you, um, uh, some of the uh, uh, specific areas. Uh, we were hoping that uh, this would set up uh, much quicker. Can we go to LBCC? Oh yeah, go ahead and double back that. Yeah. We apologize uh, that we are a few minutes behind, but uh, hopefully next few seconds we'll have uh, everything up and running. You can hit F5. Thank you. Right, so this is, um, this is the topic. Uh, in fact, the topic you have in, your, in the flyer, it's called um, the influence or the role in East and Western cultures. And uh, it, it is amazing that uh, how these three major religions are intertwined. Uh, I'm referring to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In fact, uh, 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 these are called Abrahamic religions. So I'll talk in more detail once I get to those topics. Uh, let's get, going to get started. I'll talk about, um, in this presentation, uh, what Islam means, what who Muslims are, and uh, some of the other terms we use in our culture and society. Now, Islam actually means, Islam is a collection of two words, uh, silm or, and aslama. It means peace acquired by, this, by submitting to Allah. Allah is the word for God. Allah basically means, al means the, al means the, la means, and Jewish and Christian people used uh, even before Islam as well, Jewish. In fact, uh, many of the reports here, hallelujah, is actually used to be Alleluia, the word from Allah, and that's the word used by Jew Jewish people and Christian people as well. It's the same word used in many other uh, religions, uh, slightly in different uh, style as well. So Allah is not a different word, it just means the God. But because Muslims do not believe any other uh, de deity, they only strictly believe one God, so they prefer to use the word Allah instead of saying God, because God can be misused by uh, mother guard or father guard or um, you know godfather and all those different terms so Muslims prefer to use the word Allah that represents in every language the same meaning uh, Muslims are very mono monotheistic which means that uh, under any circumstance any picture any um, uh, idol or any uh, even desires even desires cannot be placed or money can be, cannot be placed or kings or rulers cannot be placed uh, where we actually get to the close to the level of worship. So Muslims are very, very strict. This is the heart of the Islam. In Islam, the most important thing is one God. And in fact, um, one God is the most important concept. Muslims also believe that it's the same message sent from Adam to Muhammad. It's the same exact message sent by God to every single prophet. And you'll see some of the prophets uh, mentioned in the Quran as well. So Muhammad was, um, peace be upon him, we don't say Muhammad, or we don't say Jesus. In fact, it's a sin in Islam just to say Jesus. We say, peace be upon him. Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Because we um, give the highest respect to these prophets. In fact, in many Muslim countries, it's a crime to malign Jesus or uh, Ibrahim or Moses or say, make videos of, about them. It's a major, major, uh, could be a major crime in those countries as well. So this is, uh, this is the meaning of um, uh, the basics. These are some of the prophets in Islam. We call them Muslim prophets. We don't call them because we know that, uh, we believe in Quran that uh, the, the, the teachings were exactly identical. Allah is not going to change teachings from prophet to prophet. Some prophets only were descent for certain areas, certain cities, certain countries, certain communities. But the teachings were identical. Teachings were exactly the same. They worship one God and one God alone. And some of the other teachings. In fact, if you, in fact, if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first commandment is exactly what, what I'm referring to. So all the teachings were always identical. Uh, some of these uh, prophets, in fact, many of these prophets, they, are, um, they, they have surahs named after them. Surahs are the chapters in Quran. There are 114 chapters in Quran, more than 6,000 verses. And in fact, uh, there's a, a chapter called Mary. There's a chapter called Joseph. There's a chapter called uh, Jonah. There's several ch chapter called Abraham. So you can read the stories, and many of these stories are identical to Judeo-Christian uh, stories as well. In fact, uh, there are more commonalities than differences. In fact, the, dif the, the, the commonalities between Islam and Christian, I would say close to 90% things are common. 
the major differences, there are one or two major differences. The original sin, Muslim don't believe original sin is a sin. Uh, the women are responsible for kicking out the humans. We don't believe that. We, we believe that Adam and Eve both were responsible for committing that sin. Um, we don't believe God has uh, children or parents. We don't believe that. If you exclude those differences, then Muslims and Christians are probably like two fingers. They're so close to each other. And same thing with the Judaism as well. Uh, now, there are five pillars to Islam. Uh, Shahada actually was writing down over there. The testimony, the five prayers, the charity. This is the required charity. There are optional charities as well. Uh, the fasting and the Hajj. Uh, I'll talk more about these in the next slide. Um, now, this is, this is the formula. This particular declaration makes a person Muslim. If you say this word and believe in it, that's it, you're Muslim. And in fact, anybody who doesn't say it but believes in his heart, his or her heart, that uh, this person believes in one God, he's technically Muslim. Doesn't matter if he lives in Mongolia or China or Australia, anybody believes there's one God, he's, he or she is a Muslim person. So this is, the, this is the Shahada. There is no God worthy of worship except God, which is Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. And this is how it's, you say it in Arabic. So in, uh, in Islam, the text or the script is still in Arabic in the original form. At that time of Muhammad, when the angel Gabriel came, it was written down by his companions. And all these uh, texts were documented right at the time. And then they were compiled and they were distributed uh, immediately after Prophet's death. But everything was written down at that time. So if somebody becomes a Muslim, he or she has to learn Arabic text uh, in order to say the prayers, in order to uh, perform certain uh, rituals. Now, some of the other uh, important, there are five prayers. I pray five times. First one is uh, before sun, uh, sunrise. Then the second one is around 1 p.m. after um, uh, afternoon. And then there's an early, late afternoon, then uh, sunset time, and before you go to bed. There are five prayers. Now, these prayers are not like you're praying from your heart. These prayers are certain rituals you have to follow. You have to bow down. You have to um, you have to follow certain uh, steps. And in fact, uh, if you look at uh, the purest Jewish people and Hindus and some of the other people, even some Christians, they actually used to perform exactly the prayers in the same format, which changed after many many thousands of years. And rulers modified these uh, these prayers. But Jewish people still perform certain high high level prayers in exactly in a similar format. So, like I stated, the prayers never changed. They were uh, they were similar. Zakat is at least 2.5% you have to pay every year from your wealth, accumulated wealth in that year. Uh, fasting, you have to pr uh, fast for 30 days in month of Ramadan. So I tend to lose 10 pounds every fast. So fasting is not eating and drinking between the sunri sunrise and sunset, but also um, controlling your behavior, your body parts. You cannot have a sexual relationship with your spouse during fasting also. You cannot say b words like backbiting, lying, all those things. So it's a, it's a training for 30 days for you to uh, become a better person. Uh, once in a lifetime, person has to perform Hajj if uh, he or she is physically able to and financially able to. Uh, jihad, now jihad is a word in Fox, you hear in the Fox all the time. <laughs> so jihad doesn't mean fighting. So whatever you hear in the American media, turn it upside down, you will see the truth. Jihad means struggle and strive against your, yourself. So if I'm struggling with a bad habit, let's say smoking, that's jihad. In fact, Prophet uh, in his saying, he said, the biggest jihad is against yourself. The fight to defend your country, defend your home, your property, that's another jihad, it's considered a smaller jihad. So jihad is like uh, helping uh, uh, alcoholic addicted people. So you're, you're helping those people, that's a jihad. So jihad means, in Arabic, it means struggle and strive. Uh, there are uh, chapters named after some of these prophets, like I said. And the story of Mary, it's the third, a second largest surah or chapter in Quran. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful that it will make you cry. Even doesn't matter you're Christian or agnostic or atheist, whatever. It's such a beautiful story. And uh, Quran is um, it's a very small text, like thousands, thousands, six thousand uh, verses or so. It's not a very large text. It's just one textbook, one, one script. One book. Um, some of the advancements um, in uh, in uh, some of the sh they were shown in the video. Also, the first uh, oldest uh, university was created by a woman, Muslim woman in Cairo, in Egypt area. So that was considered as first ever university. 
first ever scientist, uh, which is shown in that video also, is considered as the one first true scientist. Remember, these, at that time, the entire Europe uh, was in dark ages. There, there was no uh, significant progress taking place. For almost 1,000 years, almost 1,000 years, the, these Arabs and uh, other Muslims, they dominated uh, the world in uh, innovation and technology. And, uh, it's it's mind-boggling what kind of uh, things they had created. Uh, when you look at these uh, exhibitions and when you go to these museums, the not only the uh, instruments but the machines and uh, technologies to, uh, in fact, in Spain, Spain was used to be a Muslim country. The Philippines used to be a Muslim country, and when the Spanish started conquering, the the, the lot of things happened, and uh, and in fact, uh, that's why you see a lot of struggles in Philippines, for example, in southern Philippines, there are Moros fighting against their original homeland. You see same thing in Kashmir, you see same thing in Palestine, you see a variety of other places, all these hot spots, because what colonists did in the last two, three hundred years, how they divided, chopped up these countries into different areas, and that's, that's why we see a lot of political uh, upheaval. Um, uh, in astronomy, astrolabe, you saw the lady, uh, that was the navigational system. In fact, uh, Muslims, um, um, Muslims actually, uh, uh, I think by one or two meter, they actually measured the, measured the radius and diameter of the earth by using these technologies. And they found new ways. Another reason Muslims needed to n n know the direction because of um, which direction they had to face to pray, um, uh, pray, they pray their five prayers because we have to face uh, Kaaba towards uh, Mecca to pray five prayers. So, so they had to invent these devices at that time. Uh, some of the other things, they actually used to perform surgeries for eyes and ears and throat and all these surgeries were performed. Some of these surgeries are still performed exactly in identical. In fact, many of the books which were written, um, they are in their like 35th edition or other edition, they are still used in many of the universities uh, with the same information. So for example, um, uh, scholars developed a large and complex medical literature exploring. There are literally thousands of books written which were translated into Latin and other European languages which were distributed um, throughout Europe as well. And that actually gave the golden age rena uh, renaissance in the Europe er European area. By the, by, by the way, what happened to the Muslims? Why they didn't continue to progress further? There are various uh, reasons for that one, which probably if I get a chance at the end, I'll talk more about that one later. Uh, algebra was developed by Muslims. The number system we use in math, they are developed by Muslims. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the trigonometric uh, uh, trigonometry was uh, uh, developed by Muslims. And so many other types of uh, uh, knowledges uh, were developed at that time. Uh, this is the first, uh, uh, first real healthcare system. This was developed uh, around the 10th century. And it's still, uh, it's still a, uh, you can still visit it. Uh, this was a free healthcare for 24 hours. This is in 10th century. And in fact, uh, nobody was turned back, turned away, and it was free healthcare. In fact, they made a law in 10th century to make it, um, uh, it was forbidden, hospital was forbidden to turn away patients. This is like your pure healthcare, Obamacare, we call it Obamacare. So <laughs> we're unable to pay eventually charitable foundations called VOCs. VOCs are like, um, uh, you know, you have uh, pledges and you have these uh, endowments. These are endowments were created at that time to continue to support these organizations. Uh, and many of, and this included a school, a um, complex of hospitals, and uh, uh, hundreds of surgeons were available 24 hours in these ho hospitals in 10th century. Um, some of the other experts, um, uh, they, they performed operations and surgeries. Uh, very complex surgeries were performed. They used um, uh, uh, they, they used to make you sleep. So they had the, the medicine at that time, uh, sedative medicines and those kind of other medicines, um, uh, narcotics to ensure that, uh, by the way, alcohol, alcohol is an Arabic word. Alcohol was invented by Arabs at, at, at the same time for the same purpose, to perform surgeries. So in fact, uh, if I show you the list of thousands of words we use in English, you'll be amazed. In fact, you're sitting on a sofa, that's an Arabic word. So you eat candy, that's an Arabic word. So these are the words that came taken exactly from Arab, Arabic to English language. So you can see the huge influence. So is that, uh, alcohol was um, uh, used in 800, uh, year 800. Uh, and it means, uh, came from the word alcohol. Uh, Ibn Sina, one of the greatest uh, 
uh, scientist and scholar. He's, uh, you can find hundreds of books written by Ibn Sina and, uh, uh, in philosophy. And th these people, they translated everything the Greek had to offer, all the Latin work, and then they explored and they continued to build their understanding of the previous knowledges. Uh, he was an outstanding doctor as well. Um, his book um, in 12th century, uh, by 16th century, it was in the 35th edition. And many of the countries still use the practices uh, developed by, developed by um, Ibn Sina. Now, some of the things, uh, there are thousands of uh, most advanced uh, discoveries in modern physics, chemistry, and uh, mathematics are literally, explicitly in, written in Quran. Uh, Big Bang Theory, uh, the universal is expanding, uh, all these theories, the, the salty water does not uh, mix up with the other water, the fresh water. All these, all these are verses in Quran, literally. Uh, I've read Quran in many times in English and Urdu and many other languages. I can tell you these were literally written there. Um, separation of these pulsars, the most complex topic, there's knocking stars. The knocking stars, in fact, uh, I can take you a, a site where you can hear these knocking stars, the pulsars. And these are described in one chapter, just how the pulsars work. What's the purpose of the pulsars? So it's amazing that the, these, and remember Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was not educated. He couldn't read and write. He could not have discovered the birth, uh, uh, the Ebron, uh, embryo uh, cycle. And the cycles are described in so detail it's mind-boggling. In fact, many of the scientists, they, they say that this cannot be written by a person who couldn't perform, couldn't read. And some of the people, they say, well, what Muhammad did, he took the Christian and Judeus, Judea, Judaism knowledge and he translated. First of all, he was uneducated. Secondly, the Bible was not translated to Arabic 500 years after his death. Bible was still in the original text. It was still in Greek uh, text. So it was not even available in Arabic text, and it was concentrated only to limited people within the church community. Uh, secondly, uh, thirdly, uh, the knowledges discussed here are not available in Bible or Torah, so it could, could not have been done by, uh, by a human person. Shape of the earth is clearly defined. It looks like um, uh, uh, egg of ostrich. You know, ostrich egg is um, uh, not round, it's slightly spherical. And it's, uh, that's, the, that's the word is used, that this is the shape of the earth. And, and remember, Christians were fighting, this earth is flat. And in fact, uh, um, uh, scientists like, uh, uh, who was, um, who was uh, put in jail? Because he, he, yeah, he said the, the sun doesn't revolve around the earth. Uh, and it's amazing that the Quran describes how they travel in the spheres and how each one of those are ordered to travel in these spheres, in these orbits. So all these planets, they are, they are told what to do by God. And these are the verses uh, there. Some of the things about art and architecture. I want to leave more time for questions as I'm rushing through. So uh, Muslims, they cannot uh, depict any images of any animals, any humans. So what they did, they used calligraphy and other kind of forms to uh, make it, uh, uh, to create the art and beautify the structures and architecture. Uh, you can see an example here, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very beautiful work done here. Another example here. This is looks like a dome, uh, and I think it might be from uh, uh, Turkey. If you have been to Turkey, probably see the blue mosque over there. Um, and th there's a mosque in Cordoba. This is in Spain. Well, you, if you go to Spain, you will be amazed how beautiful these structures are. Uh, by the time, uh, by the way, about more than thousand years ago, twelve hundred years ago, uh, they had uh, street lights. They had twenty-four hour services available in these cities, uh, which was uh, ruled by uh, these rulers, uh, Muslim rulers at that time. Here's a mosque in Turkey, and that's from inside. These are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces uh, of art uh, there. Some of the words commonly used in uh, English language came from uh, straight from uh, uh, from Arabic: chemistry, alcohol, algebra. Uh, average, soda, safari, zero, racket, mattress. So you can't even sleep if you don't know Arabic. So, so <laughs> guitar, cotton, coffee. In fact, uh, uh, many of the Muslim scholars, they wanted to spend more time to uh, study and educate themselves. So they were finding a way how to keep ourselves uh, up in the nighttime so we don't fall asleep. 
So they found coffee for that uh, reason. They said, well, coffee is, the, um, coffee is, uh, allows us to stay awake for longer periods of time. So that's how coffee became very popular. And really, it created the renaissance in European world. Coffee changed the Europe. That's one per particular ingredient changed the Europe because people started uh, socializing, people started exchanging ideas in European um, uh, uh, areas. Some of the other words, like as mentioned, uh, candy, check, talcum, tariff, and so on and so forth. I'm going to stop. I can go on and on for hours, but I'm going to stop because I won't leave for the next 15, 20 minutes for questions. So if anybody has any question or concern, uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, the owl in algebra and alcohol, is that the same as a lot, or is that unrelated? Uh, algebra, we use in math. Right, algebra, the, the root word, the, the al, a-l. Yeah. Is that the, the, the word is jabber. Jabber is a hard work in Arabic. Al, the hard work. So when they were working in math, they from al jabber, they took al jabra. So that's how the word. So the al is just like the. Right? The. And the, the. The, that's right. Uh, you will hear very frequently whenever you hear. By the way, uh, a lot of people think, especially uh, we have a uh, uh, concept here that uh, somehow uh, you, I think day before yesterday, the first time Miss India, uh, the girl from India, she became Miss America. And uh, people are very upset. How come Miss Arabia became Miss America? So a lot of people are confused. They don't even differentiate. Most of the Arabs in California are Christian Arabs. They're Coptics from Egypt or Syria or other places. They are not even Muslims. Most of the people you see with turbans, they are not even Muslim. They are Sikhs. Or they could be from other parts of uh, um, uh, from Africa. So what I'm trying to say is the Arabs are very small minority of Muslims. Arabs are very, very small minority. Arabs are less than 18% of the entire Muslim population. If you look at uh, Indonesia, Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country in the world. If you look at uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, there are half a billion people just on those three countries. So Arabs are considered as a very small, and there are 22 Arab countries, 22 plus. If we divide Syria into two pieces, we'll see probably more. But you, you can see that uh, there are so many different types of uh, Arabs as well. And they, are, they, are, they have different practices and different uh, traditions as well. Yes? Yeah, could you describe the Hajj? What sure. happens at the Hajj? Yeah, I, was, uh, I went to Mecca in June, first time in my life. So typically, four to five million people go during Hajj time. It will be in the second week of October this year because we follow the moon, so it changes by 10 days every year. So once in a lifetime, and by the way, every single uh, step we take in Hajj, that's exactly what Prophet Abraham did. Prophet Abraham, uh, his wife, um, Hajra, we call it Hagar, and Ishmael, his oldest son, there's a, there's a Jewish uh, conflict that no, Ishmael was the younger son, we believe he's an uh, older son. They were left there and then they built the Kaaba, rebuilt the Kaaba. In fact, the Kaaba were first built was Adam. And we have historical documents and prove that. And by the way, when Abraham and Ishmael, they were building the Kaaba, we also have the, their footmarks. I saw those stones, those stones are preserved. Their footmarks are all already there. You can see the Abraham, peace be upon him, his footmark right there. He was standing and building the Kaaba. No, we don't worship Kaaba. We don't. A lot of people think that God actually created a central location so we can concentrate around that location so we can worship one God. We only worship, I can stand here, I can worship. I can stand on the street and I can worship. But uh, that Hajj is every single thing Ishmael did, uh, Hajra, uh, uh, peace be upon her, she did, and Ibrahim, uh, peace be upon him, he did, we follow their steps. When we circle seven times, that's what, that's what he did when he built it. When uh, they went from one place to another, we follow the same thing. Similarly, we also slaughter an animal at the end of Hajj because he was ordered to slaughter his uh, son. He dreamed three times and he, we follow exactly the same tradition and the son was replaced by. So there are, it's, a, it's, a, it's an event which lasts for three to four or five days, typically five days or so. When, when I went to June, so June it was not the real Hajj. It was, it's called Umrah. Umrah is like you visit and follow same pathways, but you're still obligated to perform Hajj during the specific, specific time. So I still uh, have to res, uh, perform Hajj once in my lifetime, if I have money, if I have physical health, and the circumstances. Um, uh, and uh, in a year or so, 
uh, about close to, I would say, uh, 70, 80 million people go for Umrah or Hajj in, uh, in one year. So you can understand in 10 years period, several hundred million people uh, visit Mecca for that purpose. And now, um, the, the Mecca is the place where Kaaba is, but Prophet passed away in Medina, about 250 kilometers or so away from Mecca. So these are the two cities we visit when we perform Hajj. Yeah, so um, other than some of the restrictions, the restrictions in Islam are like you can count on your fingers. By the way, killing a human being in a terrorist attack or bombs, that's not Islam. Quran says in one of the verse, if you save one human being, you save the entire humanity. If you kill one human, innocent human, you kill the, um, you kill the entire humanity. The, there are 30 or so, one of the greatest sins, which can probably hard to get the forgiveness from God. And only God can forgive. No intercession can place, take place. Nobody can save me on the day of judgment. The Prophet Muhammad can save me. No, it's not like that. So if I commit a sin. So to come back to your question, uh, this, this is what I showed you. When you believe in this, when you believe in this, there's one God and Muhammad is his prophet. That's it, you're Muslim. Now, if some people, uh, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Out of 7 billion people, there are close to 2 billion Muslims in the world. And in fact, more Muslim, more people converted to Islam uh, than after 9-11. Because of the media, they said, we want to learn about this evil religion. We want to find out why these are terrorist people all over places. And if they read Quran, they found exactly the opposite. So uh, according to CIA, they said there are about 10,000 terrorists in the world. 10,000 terrorists in Afghanistan area and uh, uh, some of the other bordering areas in Iraq area. Now if you d take 10,000, divide by 2 billion, you can figure it out what the percentage of these terrorists are. And there, there are various reasons. There is a poverty, and these people are completely uneducated. And especially when the drones are attacked and their families are killed, they, these people, especially the Pashtun people of in, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan neighboring countries, uh, they are very, they, they like to take revenge. So they will do anything to show that you killed my family, I'm gonna do everything humanly possible. So there are various reasons for these terrorist attacks. And these terrorist attacks, um, unfortunately, more Muslims were killed in terrorist attacks than non-Muslims. In Pakistan alone, more, uh, 40 to 50,000 people have killed in last, uh, uh, after 9-11, than in the US. US probably you can count them in uh, less, than, less than 100 people were killed in terrorist attacks. So Muslims are more uh, harmed by these terrorist attacks. To come back to your question once again, so once you do this, then you have to uh, pray five times. You have to uh, pray, pay charity. Uh, charity could be paid to your relatives, to your, um, uh, to your uh, friends, family members. Uh, you also have to stop alcohol. Alcohol is considered as biggest sin in Islam. Uh, considered as the mother of all evils because all bad things can happen. In fact, there's, a, there's an example about that one that uh, one person was given four choices. Drink alcohol, murder somebody, kill yourself, and eat pork. He was a Muslim. And the, he said, oh, the smallest one is the alcohol. I'll take the smaller evil. He drank alcohol. He was made to do all those other things. So you can see the alcohol, when you are dizzy, you will do anything. So similarly, eating pork, in Christianity and Judaism, it's forbidden. Unfortunately, people don't follow Bible. If you read Bible and Torah, it's considered as one of the major sins on those religions. Even in Hinduism, in Hinduism also in Buddhism, if you read their text, I can show you the references that uh, it's considered as. So by, by making sure that you are following certain things, why women have to wear hijab? Because in Islam, men and women both have to have uh, modesty. Modesty of your, uh, uh, how you look, modesty about your eyes, modesty about your thinking. So if I'm um, making bad plans against John here, I'm not modest. I'm not allowed to make uh, uh, plans which can harm him in any way possible, financially or otherwise. If I'm looking, looking at her in a certain way, which I'm not supposed to, because in Islam, all, every human being is a brother and sister. This is the basic teaching in Islam. In fact, uh, uh, you know Dr. Oz? Dr. Oz is a Turkish Muslim, so his, um, his uh, producer is a Jewish uh, person from uh, Russia. 
So they took a DNA from both of them, Dr. Oz DNA and uh, his producer DNA, and they found out they're cousins. <laughs> and Muslims are the closest things to Jewish and Christian uh, people. The closest thing to Christianity, now you will say, well, it's Judaism. It's actually Jewish people don't even believe that Christian exists. Muslims believe Christians exist. Muslim believes. In fact, uh, uh, if I see Bible, I, uh, I cannot disrespect Bible. I cannot disrespect any of the personalities in Bible. That's the major sin in Islam that you, in fact, even if I disagree with the idol worship, I cannot uh, go and do harm th harmful things or uh, uh, hurtful things against other beliefs as well. Yeah. So if Muslims, like you and other Muslims around the world, really do condemn murder and terrorism, why is there not more of a vocalization of this? Good in question. The media? So uh, remember, after uh, Ottoman Empire uh, fell down, like First World War, Muslims were completely colonized completely colonized. So literally, there were no Muslim countries, literally, except small Turkey. So they were, and uh, British, French, Italians, parts of uh, US, they took over certain parts of these Muslims. They divided, they said, this is my area, this is my area. When they were defeated in the Second World War by their own infighting in Europe, so then they said, okay, what do we do? What do we do with Middle East? They divided and they put their own cronies, these puppets. People like, uh, you can see Husni Mubarak, people like all these people. Saddam Hussein was placed on CIA tanks in Iraq. So if you look at the history, you'll be amazed at how these cronies were, puppets were running these countries. Now these puppets were not in the favor of, um, uh, then somebody can stand up, somebody gets the education, because when you get the education, you know your rights, you know what, what's the right thing. In, in, in fact, most of the Muslims have don't um, read the Quran in their own language. They know how to read in Arabic. So they, don't, they don't know what's written in Quran. Quran, for example, says that men and women, they have equal rights. But if you look at the cultural background, the men da dominate. So women, they have to uh, uh, follow them, which is not Islamic teaching, and so many other things as well. So uh, one of the other reasons is that um, after you have uh, uh, divided uh, into smaller se segmented areas, then there was no education for two, three, four hundred years. For four hundred years, there was hardly any education, and because of all these things and poverty, uh, all these things uh, stagnated the whole movement. So there was no real movement taking place. Now, Arab Spring was considered as maybe this is the movement Muslims were looking for last uh, four or five hundred years, and uh, it is not doing very well. Also, <laughs> so you can see that what happened in Egypt. Democracy is not going to be successful because democracy says that we need equal rights. And USA will never accept that. You will, USA will never accept equal rights. Or any other country, because then they cannot control those huge population of uh, those, those people. So you, you saw this in uh, Algeria. About 92, they had elections, and the uh, par Muslim party won, and they were dismantled by a French. And uh, same thing in Egypt. Egypt, Palestine. Palestine, they had free elections. And they, they didn't accept. They called them terrorists. So unfortunately, if you go against certain other beliefs, then uh, that's what happens. So this stagnation has really caused a uh, uh, huge brain drain. So all the educated Muslims, they run away. They go to other countries because they don't see any opportunities because the rulers we have. In Pakistan, where I come from, for last 65 years, 45, 50 years, we had dictators. So imagine a country with the humongous talent, unbelievable talent, but they, they cannot express themselves. They cannot innovate. They cannot create anything because of uh, the, 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 the bureaucratic system created. Same thing in Egypt and many other places. If you look at Saudi Arabia, who gave the right to the royal family to rule all uh, the hundreds of billions of oil money? So they control 1,000 or so prints. They control the hundreds of billions of oil money. So they have no right. So these are some of the reasons. I still have five more minutes. Yeah. The images? Yeah, the geometric Yeah. Why is that? The, okay, a uh, couple of reasons. I'll give you a quick answer that uh, humans are very weak, very weak. So initially, they start something innocently. Let's say uh, in uh, Hindus, for example, Hindus, they believe 33 million guards. So uh, they start something, you know, by the way, if you go to uh, the original Hindu text, it says there's one God has no images, he has no idols, you cannot worship 
a god which has images. This is the original Hindu text. But if you talk to Hindus, they say, well, we have not reached that level yet. So we are weak Hindus. So we need to follow an idol. We need to follow something so we can reach the higher level. Muslims don't believe that because Muslims believe that humans are so uh, weak in that area. If I have a picture, gradually, let's say a picture of Muhammad, peace be upon him, or a picture of Abraham, peace be upon him, or Jesus, peace be upon him. If we have a picture, gradually, next generation, they will say, OK, this picture gave me a baby. I'm going to say thank you to this baby. Following generation, this picture gave me a baby, or this particular idol gave me a baby. I'm going to do this. And gradually, it grows and grows and grows. Then they end up worshiping. Let me give you a very quick example. Uh, the graveyard we have in Pakistan, where my father is uh, buried, uh, some people uh, put a statue of horse as a respect that horses show the power and the strength and ga ga gallancy, gallant. And uh, after I went, a few years after that to the graveyard, I found out people started putting their uh, offerings to the horses, to the statue of the horse. This, these are Muslim people. These are not even idol worshippers. So humans are so weak, so Islam cuts down even for example, adultery, adultery is considered as the, one of the greatest sins in Islam, and fornication is greatest sin. So Islam doesn't say don't commit for, for adultery. Islam says don't even go close to it, which means holding hands, kissing, being, being alone with a girl or a guy. So you cannot do that uh, if you're an opposite sex, uh, if you're not married to that person. So it cuts down the roots of it. That's a quick answer to that. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the Quran is the source of all the knowledge, and then uh, Sunnah or Hadith is the whatever pro Prophet did, it was documented by his companions. He, he went to the bathroom this way, he said the greetings to this way, he made this decision at that time, so it was written down. So it, was, uh, it is a collection of uh, books, uh, the, especially the most famous one is called Bukhari. Bukhari is the collection of uh, his sayings and his actions. Then there's a, there's a, a Muslim, there's another collection of hadiths. Uh, so from those two sources, they create laws of Islam. Laws of Islam means uh, what do you do if somebody drinks alcohol? What do you do if somebody rapes someone? What do you do if uh, there's a uh, murder by accident? So all these laws were derived from those two sources. That's called Sharia. Um, you've mentioned a couple times the respect for prophets other than Muhammad, but and, and you'd also alluded to the blasphemy laws. Are those ever applied to mentions of other prophets? Or because I hear about them applied sure. to mentions of Muhammad, but not other prophets. Sure. I'm curious on that point. Yeah. If you go to Saudi Arabia, for example, they are pretty strict about that. If you go to um, uh, like uh, uh, Iran and parts of other countries as well, but many of the other countries. Uh, for example, YouTube is banned uh, for last, I think, uh, six months or eight months in Pakistan and many other Muslim countries. YouTube, you cannot view YouTube in those places because they refuse to remove the videos made against Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Similarly, whenever they have a video like uh, uh, Temptation of Christ and those kind of videos, those are also banned because those are considered as... In fact, India is one of the leading country. India has about 200 million uh, Muslims, leading country who actually stops these, uh, these materials. Now. Uh, I personally do not know anybody who was sent to jail for, uh, uh, for blaspheming uh, Prophet Jesus, for example. But it is a crime, according to the text. And probably in certain other countries, like Saudi Arabia, they will be punished uh, severely. So a little follow-up on that. I always, it always, I always come back to uh, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Taliban, and Buddhists mm -hmm. that were destroyed. So are they not considered uh, Muslims? All right. So the Taliban's are the people who were young kids when the Russia attacked Afghanistan. So they were living in Pakistan. Taliban means students. So these were the kids, and they were getting their education in Pakistan. So when Russia was defeated by these Taliban's, by the way, the biggest defeat in British history was done by Afghanistan. 10,000 soldiers were sent to Afghanistan. Only one came back alive, 10,000. This is uh, about 150 years ago or so. 10,000 at that time was like a few hundred thousand. 10,000 were killed just by one, one, one was left. Russia was defeated by these Taliban also. And we, had, we call, used to call them Mujahideen. And if you remember, Reagan used to say, I'm one of the Mujahid. I'm Mujahideen also. Mujahideens are the freedom fighters. So these people, when they were growing up, they had no resources. They have absolutely no education. So when um, 
certain other forces, uh, like, like there was a civil war immediately after Russia left. There was a civil war in Afghanistan. And then 9-11 happened. So these people who were like in uh, teenagers and early 20s or so, and the, imagine these are very poor, uneducated people. So they actually were programmed or they were used by some of the other people. They had uh, other, uh, other uh, uh, kind of plans. So we don't uh, believe that anything they do is Islamic. We believe they, these are the, one of the worst human beings. And uh, in fact, our government in Pakistan, for example, has lost 4,000 soldiers in the last 10 years alone fighting against these people as well. So once you actually create a monster, Frankenstein, you create a Frankenstein, you leave that Frankenstein, the genie is out, what do you do in that case? So the, these are the case for these individuals. Okay, so almost time is up. Any, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, I didn't have my email address. I, I'll, I'll, I can give you my business card if you want to talk to me uh, later on. And I think uh, if you have any other questions, I'll be more than happy to help you.